So in trying to simplify a complex fraction, there is an approach that you need to understand about this. And you can see here we have multiple denominators, right? Multiple fractions. We have fraction and numerator, fraction and denominator, and then we have this big fraction, all right? And when we're trying to simplify the um, complex fraction, what we want to do is like get rid of all these extra fractions. Now, in previous videos, I talked about the easiest way to get rid of a fraction is to find a number or expression that the denominator evenly divides into. The problem that we have here is we have two different denominators. Like we know five divides into five, so that'd be good. Like we could multiply everything by five. And we know x divides into x, so we can multiply everything by x. Now, that would be a lot of work if we were to do that separately. So what is a way we can kind of understand this to do this more quickly, as well as a way that we can understand this to like scale up, okay? And what I wanna do is like, let's just kind of go back to our simple understanding of like adding fractions. And again, like students hated adding fractions because remember, you gotta get common denominators. And you notice that like two and three are not the same. So if we had to get common denominators, what we need to do is we need to find the smallest number, right? We'll call the least common denominator, the smallest number that two and three evenly divide into. Now, the easiest way to be able to find a common denominator would be to multiply them, okay? And sometimes there would be like a smaller denominator that they had in common, but a quick and easy approach that you could always work into is just multiplying your two denominators. Now, the reason why this was helpful, or the reason why this approach was you know, a helpful way to like teach students about this, actually, before I get to that, let me show you this. Like here, like 12 is not the least common denominator, right? Six is the least common denominator because two divides into six and six divides into six. So you don't always want to multiply them. However, the reason why this was important is because like when we started doing something like when we added expressions, a lot of students are like, what do these have in common? Like, I don't know what the factors are here. Like at least with two and three, we can count like two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Oh, and then six, you can do three, six, nine, 12. Okay, I can see what the factors are. But what the heck are the factors of x plus two and x plus three, right? That's kind of confusing. So what we did when we had something like this is we practiced just multiply your denominators. Now, the only time you wouldn't want to multiply your denominators if you wanted to see if they had something in common was if you had like a trinomial where they could factor it, like an x plus two plus, let's see, you know, x squared, what, plus five x plus six. So in this case, you would say, I'm not gonna multiply these. What I'd wanna do is just like here, I wanna say, well, can I break this up into an x plus three times an x plus two? And say, oh, they actually already share an x plus two in common. So therefore it's just gonna be x plus three and the x plus two, all right? That's kind of like the same idea here. So let's go back and circle over to this because why did I spend so much time talking about this? Well, my main point that I want you to understand is I have a five, right? That's kind of like my one denominator I gotta get rid of and I have an X. Do they have anything in common? No, right? It's like the two and the three. They have nothing in common. Their factors are completely different. Here's the factors that are like five, 10, 15, you know, 20, 25, 30. Here are the factors would be like X, X squared, X cubed. So what am I gonna multiply everything by? Well, what you're gonna wanna do then in this case is identify the LCM is just going to be the product of the two factors. Now again, when we get into more complicated examples, we will work with factoring out your denominators and seeing what they have in common. But in this case, they can't, if your denominators cannot be simplified, then just multiply your two denominators. So therefore, that's gonna be a five X. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply everything times a five X, everything. Now, I know sometimes that can be confusing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to rewrite everything times my five X, all right? So it takes a little time, but I think it's just helpful for you guys to see how this is gonna work. Okay, so now you can see I just derived everything. And again, like the more experience you get with complex fractions, you can start to start doing some of this in your head. You don't have to actually, you know, multiply all this stuff out. You'll get a little bit quicker on it, that's fine. But now what we need to do is just go ahead and simplify to see what our, you know, final answer is gonna be. So in this case, you can see I have a um, 15 times five. So 15 times four is gonna be 60. So that'd be a 75 X. And then here, the X's now are going to divide out and therefore it's a negative two times five, which is going to be a negative 10. And then over here, the fives are gonna divide out. That's gonna leave me with an X squared. And then over here, that's going to give me a, nothing's gonna divide out, but that's gonna leave me with a plus a 20 X. Now, if we want to be able to identify what our um, factors are going to be, you could factor out here. So I can't really do anything with my numerator, but I could factor out an X and that'd give me an X plus a 20, okay? So now we know that X, so you could simplify the denominator if you wanted to, or you can just leave it as is. Um, I'd probably leave it as is. Nothing's really going to be simplified. I mean, you could factor out a five in this case, right? You could factor out a five on the top and the bottom. But again, like nothing else is going to be dividing out. So I would just leave it as it is. But um, 
But we do need to understand our restricted values. So what we want to do is say, what values are going to make my denominator equal to zero? Well, here you basically set your denominator in factor form equal to zero, and you'd say x cannot equal a negative 20 as well as a zero, which is also reflected up there. So hopefully this video gave you some value and you understand the ways to approach simplifying complex fractions, because in the next video, I'm going to give you my best tip for being able to simplify your complex fractions. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.